So there are some really amazing combat mechanics in Final Fantasy VII Remake that are definitely gonna make you feel like a boss once you master them and even more so are going to be extremely useful against harder enemies or endgame enemies that have more in their arsenal. So in this video we're going to jump right in with some advanced combat tips that you're definitely gonna wanna know if you want to beat this game on the hardest difficulty, go against the hardest challenges, but again especially so if you want to be a boss while doing so. So let's jump right into it and as always a thumbs up on this video would be super appreciated. Let's start things off with two very powerful mechanics that Cloud can use which are of course the counter and the counter attack ability. Now the counter is something that Cloud comes with by default pretty much like how he also has a block using R1 on the controller and it works very similar to that except you will have to switch stances. So there's two versions of the counter that you can use a basic one and more advanced one and let's start things off with the basic one. So you can use Cloud's counter attack mechanic when switching to the Punisher stance and then pressing and holding R1 on your controller and waiting for an incoming attack to land. So what this does is that if you hold R1 during that Punisher stance I was talking about, once an attack lands onto you, you're going to counter all of that and deal damage back onto the enemy and this is also going to prevent most of the stuns and the staggers that might affect you. Now there's also an advanced version of this, as I was saying, it's more risky but also more rewarding. So in order to pull this one off, there's a very short one or two second time time window when switching stands to the Punisher mode and if an enemy happens to land an attack on Cloud during that time window of 1 or 2 seconds, he is going to immediately counter all of that and deal back damage to the enemy. It also prevents most of the stuns and pushbacks as well as minimizes damage but it's not going to work against range attacks and even more so against spells. Which brings us to the second tip which is of course all about that counter attack ability which is distinct from from the regular counter. So the counter attack ability is something that you learn from using the twin stinger sword that you get in chapter 17 and this one unlike the previous ability works on both melee attacks as well as range and even spells. Now unlike the previous one this is going to cost some ATB charge, one ATB charge to be more precise but it deals way more damage and it has a secondary damage explosion that looks really awesome especially since it kinda slows down time and it makes you feel like you're this sword fighter in an anime that uh, yeah it just looks all around amazing and one of my favorite moves in the game um, it's also one of the most powerful in the game especially in the end and especially on that hard difficulty when enemies are kind of hard to predict or overwhelm you with the numbers anyway let's move over to number three which is gonna be all about Tifa's canceling animation and she definitely has a few of these that are extremely useful the one that I'm getting the most amount of questions for is the uppercut dive kick focus strike um, combo that I'm using and it's definitely extremely potent but you will need a build that uh, gives you a lot of ATB charges very fast. Nonetheless you have to first master the uppercut plus dive kick which is really simple. At the end of the uppercut that you do with triangle when Tifa is up in the air immediately do a dive kick and you're pretty much going to animation cancel her fall back onto the ground so she's going to do that dive kick instead. The next one is the focus strike that you learn from the pair of Sonic Strikers that you get in Chapter 7 for Tifa but um, this is like one of my favorite abilities in the game because it both deals high damage and high stagger as well as dodging incoming attacks. And yes, this also includes attacks that might otherwise track your character and that are impossible to dodge with regular dodge. So this is what I'm using for example against enemies that can counter attack my attacks. Like in the case of the Sehajin Prince that has a counter attack ability, I mean normally also staggers you a little bit and throws you back but if I'm using a deadly dodge immediately followed by a focus strike I can evade his counter attack and then immediately come back in with a very powerful damage and stagger onto him and doing this like two or three times fully staggers him and I can just go in with a uppercut dive kick and destroy him from this point. And yeah, if you somehow manage to screw this up and realize that you're just about to head in into an attack from the enemy, you can animation cancel all of this, either when you're doing the fallback or when you're doing the charge in with the kick. On any of these situations, you can just go in and cancel it with the circle and do a dodge before you reach the enemy. Nonetheless, the final thing that you should know for Tifa is her unbrindled strength times 2 with the uppercut. This is what's 
going to increase that stagger meter to um, 300% and even like complete the achievement. But uh, yeah, Unbridled Strength just increases the number of attacks that you can do with the regular attacks as well as the damage with the triangle. And you can do it a second time for even more damage and even more like bonus attacks with the triangle. So this is your go-to ability when the boss or the enemy is staggered. Anyway, since we're still on the subject, let's go over a very overlooked materia, which is the parry materia. And despite its name, it doesn't just parry, it actually also dodges better than the actual dodge. It's basically one of the few abilities that prevents attacks that otherwise follow you or are impossible to dodge. You can use this with any character out there. This is going to be extremely useful against, uh, for example, AoE attacks in the ground that can also stagger or push you back or just, you know, throw you on the ground. Um, if you do this and time this correctly, you're going to prevent all of that and you're only going to get the minimum amount of damage from that. But I think the best character to use this on is Tifa because she doesn't even like parry or dodge with this thing. She can just spam it and kind of slide and also kind of deal damage to the character. So this is the superior form that you might want to use on Tifa to both dodge, deal damage and implement it in your regular combos. What I'm doing at the end of my combos when I might be exposed to damage or stagger or even stuns, I'm just using this parry materia to immediately do that, um, even do some animation cancelling in there and kind of overwhelm the, the enemies so that they can't predict my attacks and even if they did I would be able to dodge pretty much all of it. Moving on, also on the subject of Materia, let's go over a few very amazing combos that are probably going to trivialize even the toughest fights. And one of them is actually something that you guys suggested. And this is of course using the Elemental Materia and linking it with an Elemental onto your armor that will let you not only absorb that damage but also heal if you have the maximum version of the Elemental Materia equip. So for example, using Elemental Materia with, for example, Electricity onto your weapon is going to imbue that weapon with that type of damage but otherwise if you're using it on your armor you're going to have resistance to that damage if you're combining these over there. So for example against an enemy like Moth that's really annoying especially on hard um, she has a very powerful electric damage that can one shot you well she can now one heal you like full HP with just that one attack and she's definitely spammy with that thing. And the same goes with Shiva you can equip this with an ice materia and have the elemental materia linked to it with the three stars and she's not gonna be able to do any damage onto your character like just constant heals to the point that even the boss probably realizes how frustrating this might be. So definitely one of the most uh, powerful combos out there. Which brings us to another one which is the HP Absorb Materia and the Deadly Dodge Materia. You didn't think that this one would work but it actually does. So HP Absorb normally lets you absorb some HP when dealing damage with some of the linked materia you use with it. Like for example linking it with fire. If you deal fire damage onto the enemies you are able to um, heal yourself up to 40% of that fire damage that you dealt onto the enemy. But you can also link it with deadly dodge and every time you do a deadly dodge which is basically circle followed by an attack you're gonna be able to heal with all of those melee attacks. And yes if there is a group of enemies and multiple at the same time you're going to get like 2 or, or 300 heal from each and every single one of the enemies that you touch with the deadly dodge. Now as far as the other healing that you're seeing me doing in this video at the end of an enemy takedown, this is basically the blood sucker passive in uh, in the skill tree for the weapons. So this is one of the few times I actually go in and recommend some of these, but definitely go in and pick blood sucker when you can. In case you don't have all the skill points yet, this might be something that can be very useful against large groups of enemies. And there's also a second one that you might want to pick, also very useful, which is the stagger side. Uh, mostly something that you find on Tifa, but this lets you also recover HP when dealing damage with unique abilities to a staggered enemy. And guess what? With Tifa, that's basically what you're doing when your uh, enemy is already staggered. Anyway, let's get back to Aerith and Barret with a couple of very important mechanics here, especially Aerith, which is an absolutely amazing spellcaster and by far the highest damage dealer in the game if she has the room for it. For this, I definitely recommend the 
the arcane ward that's an ability that you learn from using the guard stick it's basically the first weapon you get in the game but what this does is it lets you double cast any attack spell for like insane amounts of damage and guess what if you combine this with a magnified attack like for example combining magnified materia with a fire attack and using that in an arcane ward this will let you pretty much double cast all of those magnified spells and they will jump from one enemy to another all over the place and it's just insane i mean the numbers speak for themselves and the second one is going to be using the soul drain ability when an enemy is staggered chances are that if you're playing on hard or if you're playing in long sequences and you are left without mana points um you can actually get a ton of mana back with Aerith if you're casting that soul drain on a target that is staggered and this is going to replenish about 20 mp in a very fast way so you can go in and spam those spells again on a final note let's also go over barrett's probably only combo which is basically using and holding square to do the normal attack and when it ends with that explosion at the end immediately press triangle um, to skip the animation that you would otherwise need in order to reload your overcharge so this is basically the best way to reload your overcharge very fast just do it at the end of the square sequence when he does that explosion from the arm and this is gonna bring all of that in no time and yes barrett Barret is an all-around amazing character to build ATB charges without actually having to rely on any materia or on his build. He can just do that with his two attacks with the, with the square and the triangle and that will let you attack with other types of abilities or cast other types of spells. So this is it for now. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and peace.